I just received those very interesting memory sticks from Corsair, Corsair Ventions 6000 C36. 1.25 volt, single sided dims, should be SK Hynix on there, which is different from all the other sticks I had so far, everything else I had was Micron. I guess these should perform much better than the Micron sticks, we'll find out. At least initially XMP did not work, it could be related to the fairly old BIOS version. I think I will just flash it to a latest one and then see if this improves things, because otherwise, I mean the Apex and the CPU should be easily able to handle this kind of frequency. This is amazing. The multi-score is higher than all the other kits I had before, at least the DDR4 and DDR5 kits. As you can see, the XMP is now successfully working. I have to look into the data of the single core performance. But interestingly, the 745 is still a bit slower than my DDR4 kits for the comparison. Okay, so I will do the gaming benchmarks and then we will be back for all the comparison data. Before we get to the results of the XMP profile 6000, I'm not going to say megahertz anymore, we'll just call it mega transfers because, yeah, you're always pointing this out in the comments and you are right. That's why we will also just from now on try to say mega transfers. But before we get to those results, let's talk about an interesting result from SafeDisk, who is the in-house overclocker from Asus. And he broke the SuperPi 32M world record last week with the 12900K clocked at roughly 7.3 gigahertz, but he was running DDR4. He was using the Strix D4 board at uh, like 4150 megatransfers C12, which I think is quite interesting because the previous record was on DDR5. And then they probably thought, let's check what happens with DDR4. It also shows that heavily tweaked DDR4 can in several ways still outperform DDR5. But let's get to the results. DDR5 is especially fast and quick when it comes to synthetic read and write rates, which you can test with ADA64. We can see 9200 megabyte per second read and 8400 megabyte per second write with the 6000 C36 kit. So it's just beating the 5400 optimized and tweaked kit with C36. Looking at the ADA64 latency, it's somewhere in the center, just below 70 nanoseconds, and this obviously will not be able to beat DDR4. In R20 Multi, we are on par with 3800C16, and if we switch over to single, it's also not the best result for whatever reason, DDR4 is also still very strong in this test. Let's go over to some gaming benchmarks, starting with Far Cry 6 again, 1080p and mid settings. It's not the fastest kit so far, it's still behind the manually optimized 5400C36, but it's still faster than any of the DDR4 kits. Very similar results for PUBG, also 1080p with eSports settings just behind the manually optimized 5400 kit. In Remnant from the Ashes, also with 1080p and mid settings, the kit is also somewhere in the center, 126 FPS on 1% low and 242 for average FPS. There's one test which seems to be quite strong for DDR5 and that's the 3D Mark Times by Extreme CPU test. The 6000 C36 kit beats the 5400 manually optimized kit by 100 points, so that's quite significant. Since we saw significant performance increases for manually optimized timings running the 5400 C36 kit, I'm going to do the same with the 6000 kit also manually optimizing the timings. I will first of all try if it can run a higher clock speed, maybe 6200, 6400, we will see how it turns out with increased voltage, and then further increase and tweak the timings and see what kind of benefit we can get from optimizing this kit further. With optimized memory timings, we could further increase R20 Multi to almost 11,000 points. There's also a slight increase in the single core performance, but it's still below the fastest DDR4 kits for me. Looking at the timings, we are now running 3000, C34, 36, 36, 56, and TRC at 92 at 1T. It is insane how much quicker this is in Remnant from the Ashes, with 136, 1% low, and I noted down 266 on the benchmark run for average. That is insane. It is insane how much quicker the manually optimized kit is versus just loading the XMP profile. However, I was not able to clock the kit higher. Even with loose timings, it would not do 6200 or even 6400. 
but the manually tweaked and tighter timings, they are doing a lot. Looking at ADA64 read and write, closing in on 100 gigabyte per second in read and 95,000 in write. Especially looking at the latency in ADA64, it's a huge impact. We are quicker than DDR4-3000C16. And especially looking at this, I don't want to hear complaints again that the timings on DDR5 are so loose because uh, combining this with the high frequency, this is a huge impact on performance. We already talked about R20 Multi, but we're closing in on 1100 points with the Quick Kit. And especially if you look down the line with 4800C40, that is something I would definitely avoid on DDR5. I would rather get a quick DDR4 kit than this. In R20 single, even the highly tweaked kit does not help and DDR4 is still faster. With the quick kit, we are closing in on 10,000 points in the Times by Extreme CPU test. Comparing this with the slow 3000C16 DDR4 kit, that's like 10 or 12% performance. That's really significant for a benchmark like this. For whatever reason, Far Cry 6 1080p scales insane with memory and also Remnant from the Ashes, but we will get to that in a second. But this is 121 in the 1% 1 low and 156 in average for Far Cry 6. In PUBG we also had a significant boost of about 10 FPS on minimum with tweaking the memory timings and about 15 FPS on average. Now again looking at Remnant from the Ashes, I'm not sure what happened here. I performed this test three times to be sure because I thought this is insane how much more performance we had. But yeah, it's a, it's a big boost. I already pointed this out in our original DDR4 versus DDR5 comparison, but we are just at the beginning of this new generation of DDR5 memory. And that's what we can see right now with these kind of development steps. That's what we're looking for. And I guess within the next weeks and months, we will see such sticks because those are engineering sample sticks. But at a certain point, those kind of performance should also make it to the retail market. And then I guess it's safe to say that DDR5 will be superior to DDR4. For sure, like 4800C40, absolutely avoid these kits, makes absolutely no sense. DDR4 will be faster if you can get some mature 3600C16 kits or even C, uh, C14, this will be superior. But with these kind of kits, we can see where the journey is going. And when there will be new kits, faster kits, we will definitely do further updates. About the memory timing optimizations, usually what I do is you just go to the ASUS BIOS and then you load those memory profiles. That's the first step. And then you can see what ASUS did for like timing optimizations. You can compare what they did versus stock to see which timings were like drastically increased and which were maybe loosened even and then you can optimize further from that step. That's exactly what I did. It takes you maybe like 30 minutes to one hour to get your kit working with these presets. They, they are pretty amazing. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.